Hello, welcome to my new video about Shop and Mazurkas. Today we will focus on the new opus number, opus 17. And Mazurka number 1, 17 number 1 in B flat major. This set, so opus uh, of Mazurkas, Chopin composed when he was more or less 21, 22 years old, already in Paris. Um, and definitely already more mature than before, than all the mazurkas that I presented for you in other videos. This is uh, the young man who already experienced uh, great cities, European cities, so like Vienna, Dresden and Paris and Prague. And he already met a lot of uh, great the finest artists in these cities and he experienced a lot of fantastic music uh, on live concerts everything enriched his soul and of course he is also changing his philosophy towards the mazurkas which i'm going to talk about uh, a little later in this opus, because this opus is already very different and mazurkas in this opus are different. But number one is not so much different. If we if we go back to opus seven, uh, number one, the mazurka which I presented for you uh, the other day, we will hear the, the similarity. First of all, the key, also B flat major the same key and also the character I think you remember if, if you watched my other video you remember that and of course you know the mazurka uh, most of you and now we have This is uh, 17 number one, also B flat major, and so the, the, the spirit of the mazurka is very similar. Um, uh, but what is the difference? Well, first of all, the first difference we immediately hear is that in the, this mazurka we only had one melody, so it was rather simple to play, no problems with that. Um, and it just flows. Here um, we have already the first pianistic problem, which is two notes played at the same time, thirds. So this is uh, this is like the, the symbol that there are two people, maybe a couple dancing the mazurka, and um, and uh, with all this little little notes uh, it makes it a little difficult to play and it makes us it shows that Chopin was really a great pianist with a fantastic technique so well let's take a look at the melody first the melody is rather simple we have first phrase and then the second phrase Again the first the same phrase and again the second phrase. Very very simple. What Chopin is uh, changing and enriching a little bit are all the other notes which we hear accompanying this melody. So the first like the colors. This color is very bright. changing he's making it more rich so we already can uh, witness and see that Chopin is trying to um, he's um, experimenting with with the sound with the sonority with harmonies um, so well so this is the the phrase uh, a and what are the uh, possibilities, what are the uh, challenges 
uh, for the pianist who plays this. Left hand is very simple, it has a very very simple um, rhythm of the dance, which in Poland is called Mazur. Uh, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. And of course we have to remember to make this dance somehow and somewhere. Uh, I, I talked about it in some other mazurka, now I repeat it again. When we when we do the rhythm of mazurka, usually we make a slur between the one and two, and then we go up with the hand, and then we go down on three. One, two, three. We have to remember that in mazur mazurka, three is a little later usually, or sometimes the two is closer to one, and three is later. One, two, three. But we cannot play like this all the time, of course, because then it will get it, it get bore a little a little boring. Uh, and this is the challenge for the pianist: how to make the rhythm here. So, well, let's let's analyze a little bit the opportunities we have here. Uh, so the first bar we have the sforzato and we have a long note pa 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 and then a long note and then one two three four short shorter notes so it seems like Chopin wants this first note to be a little longer and then in the second bar we can do the mazurka rhythm so one two three one two Three. We can do this, but we don't have to do it. Let's let's see how it sounds in both ways. This is the the first option with mazurka rhythm, and now the second without. Um, the second phrase, which has the same rhythm, um, is a little bit differently. Uh, notated by Chopin. The last bar of this, the second phrase, has the accent. And this accent here doesn't, of course, mean that we should play it very uh, hard and, and very loud. Um, in mazurkas, usually accents mean that Chopin wants this note to be played a little bit later. That's exactly how we are dancing it. So, I'm thinking now that if Chopin wants the accent on the second bar of the second phrase and he wants this note to be played like a mazurka rhythm, so probably in the first phrase he doesn't want to, us to play like this. So I think I will I will uh, consider it and I will not do it. But the second time we have to do it. And what uh, what 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 um, what is the feeling? What is the impression? Well, the impression is that we have the same rhythm. Pam pa 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 pam pa pam 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 pa 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 pam pa pam pam. But it two times differently played. The first time, the second, the second bars so of the ending. Pam pa 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 pam 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 pam. And the second time, pam ta 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 tam ta tam pam. So that's that makes it a little bit more folk. And then, when it repeats, Chopin is changing the notation again, and he is giving the accent on the first phrase, the last note on the first phrase, um, which means that he wants the opposite. So. Probably in the second phrase, on the second bar, uh, he doesn't want that. So let's let's play it again and see. And then we have the phrase number two. Well, of course, now it sounds a little bit artificial. Uh, for me, it sounds a little bit mathematical. It doesn't have this folk flow. It doesn't have this folk uh, um, uh, improvisation uh, character. So definitely, um, I, I, I need to work on it a little bit more to make it more 
uh, more natural. <laughs> Uh, what is also important to to do is um, to take care of the last note of every phrase so that it's not pl played too loud. Um, we don't want the accent on the last note. This one. And then again... It's here I think it's very important because, well, some pianists are doing the accent here because Chopin wrote the accent here. Uh, and of course they have a right to do it, but in my opinion it sounds a little bit awkward because we, even in Polish language when we talk, we never accent the last syllab. Um, and when we accent the last note in the phrase, it always sounds a bit funny, a bit strange, I would say. So, as I said before, I think, of course this is my personal opinion, that the accent means to play the note in the dance like the Polish folk dance, so a little bit later, rather than make an, a, a, a literal accent on that. And this is like the, this. The, the, there are this this uh, little nuances in Chopin mazurkas which we need to know to make them sound uh, in the in the in the Polish spirit or in the in the Chopin spirit. Um, <laughs> Go to the second phrase then then we have um, a kind of uh, heroic um, motif and then the answer the same question and now we have the most important moment in my opinion in this mazurka Chromatic, uh, chromatic scale going down this is the symbol and this is why I said it's the most important in my opinion it's because this is something which will appear in every single mazurka in this opus so I will show it later in every mazurka and I think this is the the key to understand this opus. This is the, the motif which makes this opus a unit and a, a united. All of them are united together because of that. So every time when it appears in every mazurka, um, I as a performer have to realize that and have to emphasize a bit, maybe by taking time uh, and feeling this um this well the sadness right the sorrow that's exactly what what it what the symbol is and it brings us back to this to the a the phrase a which is already different harmonically we have much richer harmonies here One, two, three, four, five. And again, differently. So I hope you, you can hear that. Uh, if you are not a musician, of course, if you are a musician, it's, it's easy for you. But the color, well, the melody is not changing, but the color of the melody is changing. When we had the first time, very simple, and only, only four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four notes. This is different, and then here we have more notes and we have different color. What's the difference? Well, it, we have more tension in the harmony. We feel more in quiet. We feel something uh, is not is not as 
as normal as it was before. This is a little bit more dark, a little, and then more tension again. And now this is more sad. Sad. Look, look how beautiful this harmony is. Chopin, Chopin was definitely inspired very well. Also different. And everything ends with this kicking the leg, two legs together. We call it Hobubiec. It was already in another mazurka. Um, well, a, a few of, of them from Opus 6 and Opus 7. Um, so that's the difference and it's very important to to analyze it and to realize it and now going back to this very heroic we have the sforzato on one so we can make one longer yeah. It should sound folk, but it shouldn't sound exactly even. Even it should be shouldn't be played evenly, uh, as if we are dancing with the metronome, because uh, Chopin was emphasizing that these mazurkas that he wrote are not for dancing. So they should sound folk. They should sound as if we want to dance, but if we actually want to dance, then we cannot do it. Why? Well, because it's the question of the pianist, the performer, who have to take time and who have to make some kind of rubato and Chopin is giving us some hints like for example this forzatos here so one chromatic and now going back Then everything repeats again. I think it's very important um, while performing this this first page to differentiate the harmonies and the touch and the colors of of them because they are they are changing a little bit. And Chopin was of course aware of it. And now we have the second the second part of this mazurka, which is very different and in fact very funny. Chopin here um, is trying to imitate a, a common play, um, a common way of, of playing of the folk groups um, when people in the countryside were meeting together to play and they very often uh, they, they were having fun by uh, changing the rhythm. What I mean is that they, for example, bass played on two instead of three and the violinist played on three at the same time and they were crossing each other they were not missing each other they were not together and here we have exactly this so we start with something very strange is it mazurka well it's not really it sounds very folk but it's a one one two one two one two one two one two one two it's on, on two or, or on four maybe one two three four five, that's how we can also count it but definitely the bass the bass is not on should be one two three it's not but the melody which comes later very beautiful melody very extremely extremely beautiful melody definitely played uh, on violin folk violin this is this is clearly for three one two three one two three one two three one two three so how it sounds together Here, when the violinist is going up, 
and then something extremely funny happens. From this note, the violin player decides, okay, so now I will change and I will play on two, so that we are together. The problem is that the bassist fought exactly the same thing at exactly the same time. So he thought, okay, I will change on three, so we are together. And they are again not together. <laughs> Listen, so here we have uh, bass, one, two, three, one, two, three. And uh, right hand, so the violinist, one, two, one, two, one, two. Extremely funny moment. Maybe not so easy to catch when you listen to it for the first time. Of course, it depends on the pianist. I think the pianist should make an effort to make it as clear as possible. Uh, because it should be funny. It should be as funny so that the audience is actually laughing, like from the joke. Of course, during Chopin times, the audience, uh, well, the people who he played them for them, they could play the piano, they, they knew everything about the piano and, and, and how to compose even, so they immediately were able to catch the joke. Uh, well, now it's a little bit more different because it was written 200 years ago, so many things changed. Uh, but it's still very refined, very, very funny way. So let's listen again. One, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, and now... Okay, now... Well, how to do it? Well, it's, it's good to make a little accent on every one in the right hand and a little accent in every one in the left hand. So we have one, well now I exaggerate it, one, 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 and one. But it's very difficult to do, but possible. Uh, so why it's difficult? Because when right hand has an accent, the left hand doesn't. So that's why. And again, the beginning. This is like the, the ending, some hesitation, very magic, and suddenly at the end they are together. So both are playing on three. One, two, three, one, two. 